time for the Pucking Around Podcast. Puck around and find out. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Pucking Around Podcast. I'm Alex, the Flyers expert here. And with me, I have the rest. I don't of know if you are the Flyers expert here. I so don't know if you're the Flyers expert. I think Jamie knows a little bit more than me, so I'm willing to acknowledge that. One of the Flyers. <laughs> yeah, experts. we we all agree with that, by the way. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know. Uh, you guys are right. Let me no, introduce everyone. People when we are, said for right you to right talk, right. Matt, we didn't mean right fucking now. No kidding, Matt. <laughs> you, this, this, you, this is the first time you spoke in three weeks, and it's mid mid friggin' introduction. Uh, we're live. And he's so. on time. We're live, so just uh, remember that. Anyway, um, before I was leading off? interrupted, um, with me are the rest of my Muppets here is Nostradamus Executive Director Rick, and with me is Bruins expert Cam, and we are also joined by Matt Norton, who is Montreal Canadiens expert, and then we have not one but two awesome guests tonight, uh, Sam, who loves to make fun of me. Uh, see her at down below, follow her on Twitter. And then one of the nicest Flyers fan you will meet on the planet, Jamie Baskow at Jamie Baskow of the Flyers Nitty. Give him a follow on Twitter as well. Jamie, Sam, how are you guys doing tonight? I'm good. Oh, I'm doing pretty good. You know, being in the same room as a legend in Sam. What's up? <laughs> Aloha. And uh, to you all, thanks for having me on for real. Uh, it's, uh, it's, not, a, not a problem. Happy to have welcome. you guys on. How's everyone doing tonight, actually, before we get into this? I just want to say, care, you, said, you mean he cares? There was, there was a you said there was a kind Flyers fan. Yeah, G, listen, I'm Jamie just surprised one. Philadelphia has any nice fans. Ooh. Well, you have to understand. I think we'll be <laughs> longer to have hey. to one tomorrow. And uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, keep the playoff hopes alive. No, I'm gotta joking. keep no. it alive, Jamie. I'm Listen, gonna, I'm gonna be honest, a the line defeated me. man right now, so I'm, I'm gonna, gonna need your honest. optimism tonight. Take, I'm, take I'm a little scared about tomorrow. Uh, I'm yes, gonna be you should be. No, you should be because my Cal's gonna beat you tomorrow. Hockey. Martin St. Louis seems to have that team playing right now, so I am a little, uh, a little unwavering here. But uh, the Habs did lose the past few games, so that that's a bonus, right? But yeah, yeah, so they're due tomorrow. I mean, they're due, especially when they're playing a weaker team. We've got seven in a row. Especially when they're playing a weaker team. I mean, they're due. My heart breaks. My heart breaks. Listen. The world's smallest violin, buddy, just playing <laughs> your song. We got technically <laughs> three <laughs> fire <laughs> here tonight, so we got the numbers for once. So Nobody's, nobody's heart is more broken in this room than I am as of Saturday after the final game for the Reading Royals. <laughs> I am sorry for your Reading Royals, Sam. Let's not talk about it. I'm ready to cry. <laughs> okay, uh, they, they lost in the playoffs. No, did anyone count. watch WrestleMania last night? No, this is a hockey show. This is a I hockey know show. What are you and we talk about doing? real sports. We talk Listen, about things that are real. I I promised I you I wasn't going to bully you offline. Don't I can't. I don't, don't, I don't care. It. Listen, me and Matt watched one of the most insane, entertaining fake. WrestleMania moments. Fake. You forgot the fake part. Night. And hang on, hang on. Don't hockey. use that word, Richard. And before we get into the hockey talk, I got to talk about this. I saw my life flash before my eyes last night when the <laughs> Undertaker showed up. And it wasn't because of the gong. It was because of the reaction of one Matthew Norton who marked the hell out to the point that he whipped his shirt out right in front of me and screamed at the top of his lungs. I thought I saw my life flash before my eyes. No, was the, I listen. Nobody was expecting the Undertaker last night. Everyone listen, wanted Austin. Awesome. The child in me got excited too when we heard that gong. That was awesome. I had to let that out. I know this is a hockey show. Yes, let's get to some real sports. Real sports that aren't fake. Wrestling yeah. is real, just not on that channel. It's just it's fake. scripted, not fake. It's so, right. so in, in, so in, in the fake. light of that, you know, with the Undertaker, you're looking at the Penguins. They've made it. A resurgence like the Undertaker, the, like they've yeah. risen from the dead or something like that. It's like you figure that they're dead in the water, and all of a sudden, I, now, I think that meme's already gone out too with the the Undertaker paying behind the rock, but it's, they put the Penguins logo over. That's the hilarious. Playoff teams right there. Yeah. Um, obviously, talk about anything. It comes back to bite us in the rear end. You know what I mean? Here, the Penguins were out of it like a week ago, and all of a sudden, now they've made a resurgence. So. Yeah. The Penguins yeah. were out of it from the start of the season, but somehow, some way, they just snuck up right behind you like Jason Momoa, like, you know, right in that meme. I mean, 
I mean, you know, I hear they have a, a pretty good writer in their AHL team. Just, just you know. Yeah, yeah, they do. Oh, oh, that, that's why there. they got their yeah. spark. Couldn't imagine who that is. Yeah, but uh, Mike Sullivan, he's one heck of a coach. Uh, I really like Mike Sullivan. I think he's a hell of a person. Mike uh, Sullivan, no. Franklin Mass native. Yeah. There's a lot you know, of Massachusetts funny, natives in the NHL, be them coaches, sure. referees, or players. Funny yeah. thing is, is yesterday at the Baby Pens game, sorry, calling them Baby Pens, Wilkes-Barre Scranton, um, they had a ref, and his name was Mike Sullivan. I was like, wow, a head coach that coaches and refs all at the same time. <laughs> Guy's a champion. Got to check up on the kids and the minors. Guy's a champion, dude. He can do it all. That was a – that was a, a – 30 game yesterday but yeah. i gotta say too i was i'm shocked that pittsburgh's back in this I, that team i had buried thrown into the the ocean i thought they were completely done but everyone what, did what that old team of Sidney crosby of gunny malkin chris letang getting michael bunting has given them a little bit of a spark yeah. Who, who's alex how do you pronounce the backup the other goalies name? Najekovic is it Najekovic. he He's better than Tristan Jari. I need to say that right now. That kid yeah. has found a spark for this Penguins team yeah. since he is. Um, yeah, but his problem he can't he can't maintain that though. Yeah, and he's went from team to team. I don't. I I just think he's he a needs to show it. He, yeah, he can't maintain he's, that. But he's quality. found a spark, and you know that's yeah, sometimes it's all it I, takes to get a run like this. Yeah, especially this close to the playoffs. That's what you want in a goalie. A goalie that you know yep. finds his game just before the playoffs and can carry you through. That's great. Yeah, but I'm not going to call him better than Tristan Jari. He's played better than him recently. I'm not saying – let maybe let me rephrase that. He's been playing better than Tristan Jari. Well, when you basically play Tristan Jari all year and hopefully rely on him, yeah. he'll. he'll it's like Samuel Urson for you guys. You guys have played him ever since Carter Hart's um, <laughs> departure. Um, so we'll call that. Which so is like, going to be a problem for the Avalanche, is it, that also um, – uh, who's who's there? Gorgiev. The Gorgiev? Yeah. But yeah, he's he's a little bit overplayed too, isn't he? Yeah, and they could have had Jake. Yeah. They're starting to get hot too again, uh, the uh, the Avs. Ever since they picked up Sean Walker, it's like revitalized, rejuvenated that team or something. I don't know. Sean oh, Walker, Casey Middlestad too. Uh -huh. What's that? Casey Middlestad too, not yeah, just Sean Walker. About, yeah, I forgot they got him. Yeah, you're right. I, I totally forgot about Casey. That was after. a perfect uh, second uh, second number two C for them, in my opinion. I thought Buffalo actually won the trade, but Middlestat yeah, is – Yeah, remember the guy that was saying that maybe Middlestat is actually the right player for them, so that makes – that giving up Byram makes – like if they yeah. get to the cup final even or win the cup, I then see. that made sense that they gave up Byron to get that guy yeah, yeah, yeah. that worked yeah. for them. I never said it didn't make sense. I said yeah, that. Yeah, y'all laughed. At I me. said that Paul By or Bo Byram is way better than Casey Middlestat. The man won a cup. You so yeah. Just look at Buffalo real quick. Look at their left side: Rosmus Dahlin, Owen Power, and Bo Byram. That's your left side. Sure, I believe Owen Power can play on the right side too. But yeah. still, that's. A young team. You, yeah, you still don't Very think that those team. three players are going to garner each oh, at yeah. minimum $6 million? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Delene is making what, 9 11, something like that? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, they got a good young nucleus coming up. I, I'm looking for yeah. Buffalo to really take the next step next season. Yeah. That's exactly what you said. That uh, right 13 side. years is in weak. a row, we've been looking for that, though. That right side, of, the, their, that right side of defense is weak. They don't what have a good. 14th year in a row, they're likely going to miss the playoffs. 13, I, yeah, yeah, this is a 14, I think, yeah. Womp, um, womp, Brian Miller, womp. I know <laughs> that the Flyers just signed some kid from overseas. From Sweden, yeah. 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 Oscar, so, Oscar, Oscar Eklund. Yeah. Everyone Oscar is, Eklund. You know, I've been seeing comments of, like, why why are they signing these kids? you got to realize that they're probably not going to make the squad next year. They're trying to build – the rosters for Lehigh. They're trying to build the rosters for Reading. Like it's not it's not throwing a kid to the wolves in the NHL. You you gotta you build your depth. farm teams too. You need exactly you definitely need depth in your farm teams for sure. Yeah, I agree with Sam actually. I, I, I can see him starting on the third line possibly, but I don't know because towards it takes a while for him to get to know a player. And I don't know if one training camp is gonna be able to swear swing him unless he were to produce 
I see him like a Linus Sandin to start. Hey, it, Linus Sandin was, you know, phenomenal. Uh, one of the best, uh, you know, free agents available, sort of like Oscar, you know, uh, Eklund. Uh, but uh, I see him just exactly what Sam said, uh, starting out with the Phantoms for sure. Uh, I find just, you know what I find interesting is that you said Torts for next year. Don't you think Torts might be not coaching next year? Uh, I, I think he's a coach. Year, I, I think he's in the front office the following year after that. I think he probably. Uh, okay. So he signed a four-year deal, I believe. Correct. We're on year two, so yeah. I think he's going to at least get one more year with this team, regardless of how this season ends. Especially with they did technically, even if they lose out, they did take a step forward this year. They were a 75-point team last year. You're looking at an 83-point team this year. That is dealt with so much crap off the ice between Carter what happened Hart. in net with you-know-who, the Carter Cutter Hart. Gautier nonsense off the ice, uh, mm-hmm. the abundance of injuries on your decor that all seem to hit at the same exact time. And, Violin. And, you know, they, and they persevered. They, they're they still in this despite that. So, I, Jamie, I need your optimism right now. I, Talk me into this. I know. Is but there just a before path? Jamie can go, I just wanted to touch on Torts. I think he he's gonna co- he's gonna want to coach until they tell him he can't anymore. I think at the bare bones he wants to be a coach. I don't I think, think he's got four. He's gonna run out this last contract, and I think he's done. I think he already mentioned that last year. That he has that contract. Oh, done. he has. Uh, I, I don't know. So. I always see him as a coach. I want him as the fucking commissioner of the NHL. <laughs> That's what we need. We need a yeah, talk, maybe. It's you that I saw say that on Twitter. Is it was it you, Cam? Somebody. Yeah, said yeah. That. The the NHL needs a ballsy commissioner and torts. I I just need to see it. Imagine him at the end of every season presenting the Stanley Cup to the fucking championship team. Just telling him like, yeah, you guys did a good job, but really, you guys really sucked. Yeah, but he works. Uh, the commissioner works for the owners. You think the owners want a guy like that? I don't think so. I think it'd be freaking hilarious. Yeah, he'd be telling them off. It would be fun for the fans. I don't think the owners would have. I, I, I don't care. I'm here for it. I would love to see him. Long. I just would love to see him. The guy went to an opposing team's locker room to beat the shit out of a coach, and then it didn't happen. By the this way, man just, is, just is to the, go back the to it with the Carter Hart for a second, Jamie, I just got a story from him on Twitter that I want to talk about later. Um, I, I was just reading something that you put out there about them admitting something. The Flyers, yeah. That that's that wasn't a fake story, right? That was a real thing you put out there. Yeah, yeah, they uh, they finally. It, it's always been um, an understanding throughout the year. Uh, the pieces exactly weren't there. You know, teams really aren't honest, right? Uh, exactly of what occurred. You know, in in an off season, but it just seemed like when the Flyers started drafting two goaltenders, you know, and stuff like that, that the pieces were starting to align. And then uh, offering an ELC to Alexei Kolosov and then signing Samuel Orson to, uh, you know, uh, a two-year deal. Um, This is all when they didn't have to. Like, uh, Samuel Orson's contract wasn't expiring. He was still on a contract. And they decided to elect to to, uh, sign him. And I think it was because they knew at some point he would be the number one goaltender for the Flyers. So when that happens, you're looking at the money aspect. You're looking at the cap, right? But look how many games uh, Samuel Orson has played this year. He's played in, what, 47 or something like that this year? It's a crazy amount. So when you're playing that amount and you're looking at cap, he should probably be making three or four, possibly even four and a half million next year because he is, you know, what they say, the rookie net fine. But it didn't happen. You know, they signed him to a cheap, cheap deal. He didn't know how much he was going to start because Carter Hart was a starter. So, you know what, Danny Briere did his, did his homework and was like, hey, had a talk. They, the good thing about the Flyers, they communicate very well the top brass. So, like, Torch is in on all the conversations with uh, Danny Briere, Keith Jones, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, Brent Flair and stuff like that. They all meet and have these talks. So, they were talking and was like, hey, let's sign Sam Erson. Uh, he's probably going to be a number one at some point. They admitted that to that. And, uh, you know, Torch, Torch said, you know, at some point we knew we would have to run with the goaltender. And he, he knew he was going to run with Samuel Erson. This is what he said, you know, being going back to the office and looking at it now, he was right. He just stuck with Sam Yarson and uh, he's running him to the ground. So I find it kind of cool. But, you know, in terms of Carter Hart, I, I, I don't think he'll be a flyer again. Uh, it's just. 
I don't know. There's just too much. There's too much there. But it's, he's not going to be in the NHL again. No, he's never playing. Yeah, it's NHL too either. weak of a situation, like the other especially guys. when you just made emphasis that you want to completely change the culture within the organization after having such a, yeah. a toxic upper management in prior years. Yep. You finally are buying the fans in with Dan Hilferty, Danny Breer, and Keith Jones' message around the league. And, you know, this this team is has researched from that, at least to a, a team that we can watch and respect every night. And, you know, with that, let's let's get to this playoff battle that win. So, East wild card race right now. We got five teams likely battling for two spots, it seems like. I think we can write New Jersey and Buffalo out of this. They each have four games left. The max yeah, point yeah, total is 87. No, they're, I, they're gonna need beyond miracles to get in. I, so I think they're gone. I do think a miracle will do it. So <laughs> realistically, you have the Islanders, Detroit, somehow Pittsburgh, Washington, and Philadelphia, 85 through 83 points, 80, 77 to 78 games played, depending on the team. Let's Only talk the about Flyers have 78 games played out of those teams. Yeah, multi, so only the Flyers have 78 right now. I think everyone else is 70. No, yep. no, Every, yeah, actually everyone else is Everyone else has 77. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So, with that being said, it means the Flyers We are got tough. a lot. We got a, a a pretty big week of hockey coming up. Yeah. Now, Flyers have when we look at this, let's start let's go from the top down. New York Islanders. That team right now is starting to find their groove a little bit. I think they're 5 and 1 in their last 6. Um, I, it's been an unlucky source. Uh, Varlamov has been fantastic in net for them. It hasn't really been that much of uh, Elias Sorokin. And they're getting, you know, some good scoring. Brock Nelson has been good for them. Uh, Matt Barzell has started to find the, his game. But they still have a, a relatively tough schedule. You know, they got two games coming up against the Rangers still. They got a game against Pittsburgh. Montreal could play spoiler on them. Could? Could. Will. Don't, don't, don't honk your horn. Will. Right? I hope you do. I'm rooting for you on Thursday, not tomorrow. But no, I'm talking about tomorrow and Thursday. Uh, you, you can have. Everybody gets that back to back with Detroit to end the season. No, fuck that, dude. Tank. We can throw, we can throw a wrench in a lot of these teams' plans. <laughs> no, no, no. I actually no. think next season the Habs are really going to take the next step. That that's one team I have on my another radar. Another year. Oh, they're without gonna take doubt. another year. Without yeah. maybe another year. That's what I, I told next these year guys. They make a the step. Yeah, 2024-25, I expect it more than this. Yeah, year. I, I, I see thought it. this year. I thought this year they were going to be able to take a leap, but with all their injuries, they weren't able no. to gain yeah. traction. Next year, if we stay healthy, they're going to take. You could right be where we are right you now. Gotta yeah. You got to help. By the year after that, they're definitely. I think they're definitely in the playoffs. Maybe that's next where year. I think. That's where I think you guys have the issue is your health at the moment. Yeah, you guys need to solve that. And your goaltender. Gold but anyway, we're talking about the New York Islanders. <laughs> um, fuck <But> Montreal. <laughs> they got a, I also have a bit of a tough schedule still. You know, that's every conversation is about the house. What are you up? talking about? Is that a team that you like? What when we look at that team right now? Is that a team you think is secured? Or well, has the best chance out of everyone? Or is that difficult schedule going to really play in a factor here? Because two games Islanders against the Rangers, are going to make it. It's it's definitely definitely could play burden. I don't think it's I don't think anything right now. Uh, with four or five games left, there's still time. I don't think anything's secured yet. Yeah, I don't think the Rangers are gonna. Oh, I do. I don't think they're gonna drop. I you think, think they're oh, gonna drop? Out? I don't think they're gonna the drop. But all out for the sheer fact that. Whatever team gets that top spot in the East, the Bruins are only one point behind the Rangers. The Rangers yeah, have a game in close. Here. Yeah, but I, I still don't think – I think they'll split that. I think they'll go one and one. But I yeah, don't They, think they the lost Rangers both games against the Rangers so far this year. So Here's I, what scares me out. This is what scares me. Look at when the Flyers play the Rangers. We're playing them, what, Thursday. Yeah. So, with that being said, they would still have two or three games left until the playoffs. That scares me because mm-hmm. when the Islanders are going to play them, they're going to play them towards the tail end of the end of the season where they might bench, you know, hey, you know what? Maybe I'll call up an AHL goalie or something. And, yeah, I think you know, they got them second to last or, game or of the year. Of that nature. So the Islanders might actually get them at the right time, whereas the Flyers are getting them at the wrong time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like that's what scares oh, yeah. me about playing the Rangers Thursday. Yeah, so two lo- you're saying two losses in the next two games, right? No, well, 
I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm worried about tomorrow because you have a phenomenal coach. I've always been a big fan of Martin St. Louis, not just as a player, but as a freaking coach. That dude is coaching his butt off over there. And he I has that so. team rocking and rolling right now. Yeah, they have a few losses, but that's the team that scares me is when this is their playoffs. And, and, yeah. and, and that's what some fans, you know, see, don't seem to realize. They're like, oh, well, they sucked the entire year. Well, yes, that may very well be true, but this is their playoffs. This is their Stanley Cup right now. They're trying to knock the teams that are knocking on the door out. Right. And don't think that Martin St. Louis isn't putting that message in theirs, who has been a veteran of the game for so long and been a phenomenal player. He is now a phenomenal coach, and I guarantee that's the message saying, hey, let's knock them bastards down. You that's know, their like, goal. That's their goal. I know that their goal is to win every game that they have left. So that's my fear. That is, that is my fear. We're playing the Habs tomorrow. They're coming off a few losses. The Flyers have – the good thing about the Flyers is that they're on a seven-game losing streak and they have to win at some point, whether they're that's due, this yeah, season or due. next season. Yeah. So at, at some point, they got to end this losing streak, you know what I mean? So honestly, that may actually come in to benefit the Flyers being on a seven-game losing streak. Going in, sorry, Cam. Sorry, going into the Islanders and their goaltending, they have phenomenal goaltending in their yeah. in their in their pipeline. They have Ken Appleby yeah. in, with Bridgeport. Um, I forget who the other goalie is there, but then um, you go down to the ECHL with the Worcester Railers, and they have Henrik Tikkanen, who is like, I'm pretty sure him and Fedotov are the same height. Like they are massive. Um, and he, you put Tikkanen in a net and it's like, it's like, I, I sit there and I'm like, all right, who's the goaltender? Rod Caster will tell me, I'll be like, well, we're losing this game. <laughs> like there is no getting past Tikkanen. <laughs> I've never heard of him. They the issue with the Islander, I mean, that's good that their future prospect and goaltenders is going to be good. I think my biggest question and concern with that team is that they don't have much else of a talent pool in terms of their defense and their uh, in their forward front. They have a bad prospect. They don't. They don't have much coming up, so that's going to be concerning. I'm glad they have goalies. That's going to be good. So they should look at tr- if they really believe in the next goalies coming up, then they should probably start trading for higher draft capital and you know start rebuilding that team. That rebuild's got to come and it's got to come quick. Because they, it, yeah, they can maybe turn into a retool. I, I, I read yeah, something. No, that that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, that'll probably be more of a retool than a rebuild. Yeah. I, I, well, I read today that Patrick Waugh was really helping the goaltenders out over there. And that's why, like, the Larmoff is really taking they, what they say that the next step is because yeah. uh, Patrick Waugh has been uh, having such a big influence on, you know, uh, you know, both goaltenders over there. I want to backtrack a little bit to what Jamie said about what he, uh, the Rangers are getting the Rangers at the right time versus the wrong time. And I want to play on that. And that's why I say it's not the Rangers are going to cave for the Islanders, right. but if they're already winning the other games and they've already secured their first spot in their division or the president's trophy, there's no need for them to risk an injury. And that loss yeah. to them does not matter. So that's why those odds of the Islanders winning it would increase. Now, do I mean they're just going to throw the game? No. But if you think that they're going to go in heavy four checking, ooh, right. big mistake. No, I mean, that could that, wrong. that could wind up being a game, too. Like Jamie yeah. said, like they could might end up resting a guy like Zibanejad, you know, the yeah. bread man. Panarin, yeah. That's well, Panarin's out with injury, what right? What is that second? No, he's not. Uh, he's he's not. Actually he might be. the Isles. Saturday? What do you mean he's out I know they injury. play them tomorrow. What? I know I know Panarin was out with an injury at some point, but I don't know if he's back. I can't remember. We just played them. He scored. He oh, got he scored? A goal, got a goal and three assists. Wait, sorry, Rick. I couldn't hear you. What did he do? A goal and three assists. Sorry, one more time. He's, in yeah. other words, he scored this. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, but, uh, I'm deaf today. You said a goal and three assists. Just wanted you to confirm. Sorry, la, just la, 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 la. When, when is that second <laughs> Isles Rangers game? Is it Saturday? I don't, I don't know asking? their schedule off the top of my head. I believe it's Saturday because I know they play but them tomorrow. You got to um, imagine they're going to split the season series with them. They've already lost. I'm sorry, not the season they series. I'm sorry. You're going to split the season ending series. ending series with them. I think you're going to see a split with them. I, you're going to see the Islanders come out with a lot of fight. I I, I mean, you're, they're going to be playing playoff hockey. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, the Rangers are not. Everyone's That's playing plain and playoff simple. hockey right now. It, I it wouldn't is say Saturday, that. Uh, Alex. That's what I, I wouldn't thought. say so, everyone is playing I, playoff hockey right now. So, 
here's the Clinch one thing: teams in this. might not be if they have the one seed pretty much locked up. I would agree more. The Bruins are only a point behind. I think the Rangers are at one uh, one ten. I'm sorry, the, they're the both. Bruins I'm sorry, are three, three points, points behind, behind them. I did. I did. I, correct me. My apologies. They're three points behind them. So I think a lot's going to have to do what happens on Tuesday because if the Bruins feel like they can still catch them. Bruins pick up a win and the Rangers lose tomorrow. Yeah, but so isn't Dallas. They're also three points behind. So it, they're competing well, I'm not with talking two... President's Trophy. I'm just talking first in the East because the big objective is avoid Tampa. They're the wild card one right now, and that team is hot. That has been a big thing right here. If yeah, I'm not worried about Tampa. Try to avoid Tampa. Oh, you should be. I'm, I'm not. The I, right they're going cr- to They're gonna crash. I, I feel like they will crash. It said that, they, that you thought they were going to fall out early, and they won. I did bench. think that they were going to fall out, but I think it's Nikita Kucherov. He's putting them on their back. Vasilevsky's been playing his game pretty damn yeah, well he's, too. Lately. He, I don't think he's going to do well. He, he just had back surgery, and I, and we already said it several times. The playoffs is a whole nother beast. High level intensity. I think Vasilevsky could potentially go down with injury because he's going to need to be moving very rapidly, very quickly. And they didn't. They jumped him right into back into game time action, almost right after his surgery. Like he was ready when they said he was ready to go. I think they they're going to make a, a regrettable decision with that. I mean, that's to be determined. I I look at the glass half full way of that and say they jumped him in early, which I agree. And he was rusty. His back was probably a stiff. It wasn't quite vast oh, that we knew those first two months. But once he got yeah. going around February March line. He became normal Vasilevsky again once his back started loosening up, once he started finding his game again. Because he didn't get an offseason to really get ready for things. He had that that surgery, and yeah. he was out. Yeah. So, but I think outside of their top line – Well, you, they don't can, have the depth they used to be. I you can sil- Yeah, you can silence that team. And they I'm, do not have the depth they used to have. Yeah. I agree with that. Once you solve, once you solve for Kucherov and point, that's it. Um. Well, let's move on here. Next team we got in this mess is a wild card two right now, the Detroit Red Wings. 77 games played, 84 points right now. <clears throat> that team is on a bigger drought than we are. They haven't made the playoffs since, what, 2016, I believe? Was the last time? Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Alex, what? I swear if you badmouth Lion, you are never going to hear the end of me. <laughs> I like Alex Lion. I don't have any ill will against him. He's got the heart of a lion. Listen, he gave me a lot of material back. He helped. Let me say he wasn't the main reason, but he helped give me a lot of material in that Bruins Panthers series last year. Bob was a big part of it too, but Lion helped from the start. But I think with Detroit, this is a young team. Obviously, Patrick Kane's there, but is that team going to, how's that team going to be playing under pressure in a playoff atmosphere with? Little to no experience on the roster for the most part. It's a pretty much a completely rejuvenated team from their last playoff appearance in 2016. They've been in the cellar for four years, and they started slowly climbing up a little bit. Is that a team that we think, despite the young talent that they got going there, um, Raymond, Dylan Larkin, uh, who's that stud? Uh, Sedin? Who's that stud defenseman that they have? I'm blanking. Morris Cedar. Cedar, yeah. They – there's a lot of young talent there. Is Detroit's young talent going to be able to step into playoff mode, or is this going to be a team that does that thinks the lights are a little too bright for the moment right now? Remember, they're no. going to be playing against the Rangers too. I don't think. Uh, I, I don't think they have a shot. You think that it's going to be a team that? Falls I agree up? with that. I mean, they're going to be playing the Rangers. I, I don't know. That's pretty. They play tall. Washington tomorrow. That's the game of the night out of everything so far. But I'm just saying, if yeah. the Red Wings they, make the playoffs, the Wings the also got a tough schedule to end the year too. Yeah, yeah they do. The Wings, yeah. all, the Wings also have to play the Isles. They got don't Capitals, play. Pittsburgh, Leafs, and then the back to back against us. And oh, like the I, Capitals had to play. I'm sorry. Sorry, Sam. I didn't mean. No, so. you're yeah. fine. You're fine. And like I said to somebody yesterday, so obviously I attended the Wilkes-Barre game because, well, it, that's me. Um, <clears throat> and they played uh, Lehigh Valley. And not n- nothing bad to Lehigh, but Lehigh played very sloppy. Um, and you will, you're going to see that. Um, you have to watch these teams and you'll see the teams that are well-oiled and run 
with no issues. And then you're going to see the teams that have no depth are new, have rookies on it. It's, it's going to be a tough go for a team like Detroit because they are so young. And then you go up against yeah. a team like the Rangers who have depth, who have the experience on it. And it's just kind of like, like, where are we going here? Yeah. You also forget that they have Dylan Larkin, Alex to Patrick Kane. They have, yeah. they do have a lot of veteran leadership on that team. In my opinion, with the Detroit Red Wings, that's not their problem. Their problem is defense. That, that's been a huge problem with them. And don't don't hate me, Sam, but their goaltending is not prime. All right. Well, you're going to go get I, blocked. So I don't hate Alex Lyon. Sam, you want to change your opinion on who to bully here? No, I still bully you. I don't hate Alex <laughs> Lyon, and I don't hate Val Uso, but they are not where they need to be for that team to succeed, and neither is the defense. Outside of Maurice Sider, they really are – I don't think they have a lot. So I think but I don't think improve. I don't think Detroit was willing to take the risk and put Lion on waivers because Lion would have gotten snatched up in a heartbeat. Oh, easy. Yeah. No, I agree with that whole again. I don't think they're bad goaltenders, but they're not playing at the level which that team needs to be. But that is also contributed an attribute. Oh my god, an attribute of the defense because I don't think the defense is where that team needs to be either. Like I said, outside of Maurice Sider, I don't really see much there. In terms of like really strong, reliable defensemen, and you won't run circles around us. Just saying. Listen, um, yeah. I want to mention one thing. You bring up Alex DeBrincat. He is a veteran, but I don't think he's ever played in a playoff game either. Has ever actually been really close? Was he? Was he on the black? Well, that's what happens when you play with Ottawa. In, in Chicago, yeah, but too. he was with Chicago. I oh, think yeah, they I, were I, in. A, I think they were in the playoffs. He yeah, one when he was there. Was I, he? They on didn't a win. He was on a playoff team, I believe. I don't. I can't remember. I know he played with Patrick Kane for a while, but I I don't remember if he was on any of the late play. Maybe the bubble. Were they? Was he on that team during the bubble? I'm yeah, I'm bubble. on EP right now. Yeah, he was on the okay. Chicago team in ni- uh, 1920. He played nine games with two goals. And 1920. Yeah, he's pretty old. I didn't realize. I didn't know he was that old. The 1920 yeah. season, you freaking jamoke. Oh my god! Someone get him off the show. I'm sick so of him. Alex Deprinkid, folks, is 126 years old. Breaking. I didn't know that. <laughs> Alex looks like a fish when he does this. <laughs> Cam, look in a mirror if you want to talk about being fish. Drink your wine. Being fish? This Drink is my your wine. pain medicine right here. That's your pain medicine? My lovely girlfriend's father crafts Not- the most amazing wine. And shout out to him, Frank. Thank you for yet another amazing glass. I can attest to that. <laughs> yep, Fred, no, Matt can you for your heart. definitely assess to that, too. We have a bunch of wine sommeliers in the chat now. Red wine is yes. the way to go, my friend. I have slowly made my way over to the wine store. I love red wine. I don't think Detroit makes it. No, I, um, I don't. I don't think they have a prayer. It's not one. Uh, the the only way that they would is if Alex Lyon really got hot like he did last season, which he can. Uh, he has been there before, but I just think they're miss. They 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 are just missing a few links. I, I to me, the scariest teams right now are Pittsburgh and the Islanders. Mm-hmm. I have to unfortunately. Pittsburgh, agree. as of this recording, too, is up one nothing right now in the second period against uh, against Toronto. Toronto. The big you know, bag of fucking sucks. Uh, this, this, I, I'm going to tell you, man. They had the veterans over there that know how to win, and that that's what that that locker room is doing right now. Yes, they're older, and yes, everybody <laughs> wants to be out. Uh, no, like, you know what? <laughs> they, 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 I mean, think about it. They've won a lot. They you know, let's be honest. You know, I it, it's it annoys the heck out of me because they are they have won so much. And it, you know, it, Jamie, it, I thought we were finally rid of them. I was. I I was pushing no. down a lot of people's Dude, I, throats. Back I've in been envisioning. Work. I've been envisioning the Undertaker coffin being underneath my house, and I'm like, okay, cool. You know, the Penguins. That's where Latang is. You know, Crosby's hanging off the uh, edge there. I'm like, oh, I still have life. I still have life. But no, I can't come out. And then all of a sudden, now it's like dun dun dun. I'm that here. that meme of Undertaker and the Rock. <laughs> that's a pretty much a perfect example of the Pittsburgh Penguins right now. As much as I hate to admit it, it is Andy Crosby. Up. He is put. I don't think he is Great. the heart, or is even should get real actual consideration. But he has played at a heart level this year to carry. Yeah, it, we didn't, haven't even talked about Eric Carlson. Is it? Isn't that something? You know what I mean? Like Carlson's not entered one of our conversations. Anybody no. here? He yeah, but their power play is abysmal though. If you look that at it, true. like 
he, uh, you department. have Latang, Malkin, Crosby, and Carlson on your power four people out of your five people on the power play, and you're telling well, me they're you can't on two be separate better power plays that demon. They shouldn't that, be. And, they and shouldn't be. And that's what gets on my nerves. Like, uh, sorry, I hate to say this, but about the about the Flyers, there's no reason in the world why that power play should be this bad. Uh, I'm sorry, Agreed. there's too much talent here. And, and and I'm not saying they're the most talented players in the world. But there's too far much talent to, to be this bad. And and I think that this time of year, what do you need? You need that power play goal. You know, whether it's one, whether it's two, you know, you, you just need it. Or, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. The power this play is, what, is the third consecutive year we've You had don't have that quarterback. You don't have the quarterback. Montreal went through this for the last, I don't know how well, many Drysdale years. Well, Drysdale is hopefully going to emerge well, into that. Yeah, but he's not there yet. Out. That's a tough position to play. Getting a power play quarterback, man, makes a huge difference. I think they need a one. guy. One issue the Flyers have right now at the power play, they need a guy who can win battles off the boards. Last year, the big issue was entering the zone on the power play. They could not enter the zone to save their yeah. life, and it would be an instant 20-plus seconds going off the clock every freaking power play, it seemed like. This I'm year, they don't have a guy that can win those battles against the boards and win those 50-50 pucks, it seems like. I'm they also not guy. willing. What's up? No, sweetheart. I'm sorry. I'll let you finish. They need a guy who can pretty much help generate some real pressure on that power play with some grit and physicality. And they need they need a Wayne Simmons type in front of the net, too. I don't feel like they have that. Ever since. And that's, that's why that's why I was a big fan of this Oscar Eklund signing, 6'4", sturdy, doesn't yeah. lose the puck, board battles the butt off. You know, he's not a bad skater for his size. I think that – I wonder if that played effect and was like, hey, let's put this big body. What the heck? What the hell? <laughs> let's see it's what we what, can do. It's you what know? the Bruins so, did signing Justin Brzeau. Big-ass yeah, body. He a team, and he's – you know, I give JVR so much crap in the world. I think he's slow as a snail, but he's still a good net front guy. But he knows that's what he, he, he knows just where, he, Alex he knows and I will go back and forth on this. You, I don't care how slow you are, yeah. but if you are have sure, a freaking a huge hockey brain, huge hockey IQ, guy. it's not just that. It's about the, the defensive game, too. If you can read a play... Yeah. You're likely it doesn't matter if they have speed because you'll be able to angle them to the yeah. boards. Yeah, you know what? I wouldn't mind if the Flyers they're so bad on a power play if they put D Lo on it. You know, put put Delorier, park him in front. Yeah. Who's gonna move Delorier? Who who's gonna move? No one. nobody in the league would be Get able to move that fucking that's, body. Dude, you know what I mean? And, and that's why I was a fan of Hathaway being on the power play too, because nothing was working. Toronto so just thinking, tied you know it. Huh? Toronto just tied the game. One oh, one. Yeah. Just want to throw that out. Continue, and, Jamie. My apologies. And not for nothing, but um, obviously, I'm minor league. To talk about Lehigh Valley, their power uh, their power play is sixth in the league. But um, I'm looking at the penalty kill right now. Give me one second. The we... thing is, I think they need a better coach. Rocky Thompson is not it. Oh, real, real quick to Jamie. Jamie looks like a big guy, like a big dude, like six. He, what are you, six two? Like you gotta be. You, you look Jamie like a muscle. You know, one year. Deal you, yeah, you got a muscle a fucking body, dude. If you can't skate, I'll just put you on skates with some. Yo, I'm skates. tan enough to play, <laughs> buddy. And then all you gotta dude, do I, is yo, just, I'm rocking this tan to no end here. Yeah, buddy, just pop <laughs> your ass right, right in front of the it. net for them and just tip shit home with with your face, your ass, your stick. I don't give a shit. I guarantee you, Here's you could do whatever. it. Nobody's yeah. moving your body unless you. Lehigh's, just... sorry, can't Lehigh's no, penalty penalty kill is twenty fifth in the AHL out of thirty. Yeah. Think yeah. about Lehigh. Yeah. You know, one player that took a step back this year that I was looking for was Elliot Dinoye. Oh, uh, oh yes. man, he's been ripping. He was your next Wayne Simmons mm-hmm. type of guy. Oh, man, I was high on him. To be honest with you, I was. He, I think he, I think it's just a and... sophomore slump. To be honest. He, he had a rough year last year, too, I believe, didn't he? I said the same thing about Jake DeBruskin. It no. just seems like every year is a sophomore slump for him. Yeah. No, I, Elliot, Elliot was – he was he actually had a really good rookie season. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought I he potted like, like 19 goals, if I'm not that. mistaken. I, thought this was... I don't know. But he, he's just, they're not playing good right now. and uh, I don't I don't think Pittsburgh makes it. I, I hope you're something's right. Something's going to crash. Because I can't do that again. They, well, there's no the way. They, they have to run into something somewhere. I and the Flyers make it. Well, they have I a mean, tough schedule. 
They have a very tough they schedule. They do, there. and I don't think they're going to be able to. They'll be able to overcome it. I honestly think the Capitals overtake them. Uh, well, they do play each other. The Cavs, yeah, they I play think... each other. They all Pittsburgh also plays the Isles again. They play a game against the Bruins. Um, they play the they play uh, wow. Toronto tonight, and I we think we play them to the end the season. Capital, that's our last it, game of the season against the Caps. It, yeah, that's big for that'll that hope that could be for a playoff spot. We'll see. Yeah. Um, shit. What was I gonna say? I know you're too busy trying to hit me with your mic, and you forgot. Uh, yeah, it's fine. I guess I. It's whatever. Um, As my mother says eh, it must have been a lie. True. How about Alex Ovechkin? Capitals, though? Let's move on to them because that's a team we should talk about a little bit. Yeah. Alexander Speaking Ovechkin. of them, yeah. Thank you. God. Is that what you want to talk about? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fuck. Lead the way, Cam. What's he up to? Like seventy goals now. He's know, right, dude. He he, February. Go ahead, sweetheart. Sorry, no, go ahead. <laughs> go it's, ahead. it's the Nick Alex Fournette show. Nick I Suzuki and Alex. O- he's caught fire since February. Yeah. Nick Suzuki but, and Alex Ovechkin since the All Star break have both scored scored twenty goals, and that's fourth best, third best in the yeah. league since then. Yeah, yeah he's, he's at twenty nine right now too. He's, he's insane. He's I can't player. believe Suzuki is up to thirty three goals. I, he's caught fire. He's I genuinely he's thought Alex player. Ovechkin, the way he was playing, was not going to reach thirty, and then he's just like, yeah. I can, I, I, I can score. I big Russian men. And so he and he started scoring. So yeah, I was a big great. fan of uh, Nick Suzuki's brother Ryan. Uh, I interviewed him before the draft. Uh, man, he spoke a lot of kudos about Nick for sure. Yeah, so. smart kid, very smart kid, Nick. Yeah, his soccer coach. I don't know how old he was, but his soccer coach said smartest kid he's ever coached is Nick Suzuki. Why? Because yeah, he's, he's got a stud there. He's, he's smart. No, he's he's he's, he's, he's a really he's smart kid. Very what? intelligent. Kid. However, and he's... another thing, he went to art school, also, and it taught him how to sort of think outside the box. And I think that's how you see some of that in his play. Yeah, yeah. I wonder how many boxes he drew. <laughs> However, his his brother Ryan Suzuki um, has had a bit of a a rough a rough go in the AHL. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't have the talent his older brother has. I mean, not only that, but. Uh, Injury after injury after oh, injury. Maybe that's what it is. Then. Yeah. I lost track of them. I was pretty high on them, to be honest with you. So was I, actually. I, I wanted them to draft him in his draft year. The Habs. I wanted them to draft yeah, him. Yeah. But... yeah. I think yeah, – is that you know what we got cold? I, mean, I, I don't know. I just think the Caps are a little older. They're elder. Um, I, But much like the Pets, I guess. You know, I, I, I think that – uh I don't know. I, I think that was a big loss yesterday for them, you know, in overtime. and Losing you know, to Ottawa. Losing that's losing to Ottawa. Oh, around. yeah. When I saw that, I thought they're done. That was my yeah. thought when I saw that they lost to yeah. Ottawa. And I, I just think I, – I don't think they have enough. Uh, just my personal opinion. I think this is going to be a race between the Flyers, the Penguins, and the Islanders. Uh, and I, I, I'm not pretty high on the uh, Red Wings. Uh, I, I wish I was because one of my favorite players in the game is Lucas Raymond. And uh, you know I'm pretty high on him. It's okay. We're gonna spoil it for them. We got them the last two games. So I hope you guys do. We're gonna oh need God. some assistance in this. Um, <laughs> but how exciting, though? Think of it this way: How exciting is this? You have four teams that can do this. And Alex, I think, on a couple podcasts ago, basically did five, whatever. Fuck you. And like, you have five teams fighting for this spot. And Alex, I think a couple what a couple podcasts ago, we were arguing that the Islanders were not going to do it. Guess what, buddy? I had they're, them on they're right there. I had them on life support. I originally said they were out, but then I changed yeah. it to life support. Yeah, okay. you know Alex, what? you're on life support. They, they gave them the shock, and they pretty much won Undertaker and set up. Yeah, you were sitting you know pretty what? comfortable at number three too in the Metro, and look what happened. There's something I, that needs to account. The reason the Islanders are making this comeback is because they figured out Patrick Watt's system. He yep. finally has them playing the way he wants them to. And that takes a while, too. Takes, and it uh, also helps that, everyone around them collapse. Yeah, sometimes it takes 15, 16, yeah. 17 games to do such. And then once they figure it out, this is what happens. That's why the, the team I'm afraid of the most are, are the Pens and the Isles. That, 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 that's Because the Penguins are so hot. The Isles, because they got Patrick Waugh and they figured it out, you know, what's going on. And 
He has both net miners over there. He's not afraid to, you know, use either or Sorokin or, yeah, it's just amazing what's what what what's going on with Varma. But uh, yeah, I I I, I, I don't know. It, it'll be interesting. It, I feel like for every one of those bubble teams right now, too. I mean, you guys could probably imagine, like Jamie, you'll probably agree with this that it's exciting. But it's also yeah. very scary because now yeah. you're at a point where it's like, okay, guys, we're, this is like the playoffs now because every game matters. Yeah, I'm yeah. not looking at this as just like a regular season game. I'm looking at this as like, this is it. Like, you know, this yeah. is our season. So yeah. I, I feel like as much as it probably pains you guys, it also excites you because now when you look at the game, you're looking at it with such more emotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Finally, some. It's about time that the Flyers have meaningful games this time of year. It's it's, it's been, been, a bit, it's been some time. It's been a little bit here, mm-hmm. but I I think that Torts has them playing the right way. I know Saturday's game was horrible. Friday they played well against Buffalo. They played Disney excellent Bowl. against Buffalo. Um, that game so I think is a that crime they're starting they to. I think in some way they're starting to turn the corner, and I think that hopefully that plays well for tomorrow against the Habs. The Flyers, if the Flyers lose tomorrow, I think they're done. I agree. They, it, it, they have to win tomorrow, and they have to do it in regulation because ROWs are going to play as an effect here, you know, as, you know, the, the Isles, you know, those, those you know, playoff tiebreakers there, you know, against the Pittsburgh Penguins and Detroit Red, Red Wings and stuff and Caps for that matter. I think that they are tied with the Caps for ROWs right now. Yes, so, they're tied regulation, ROWs, and total wins. So the next tiebreaker – it would go down to head-to-head points gained, yeah. and Washington leads that three to two right now. They have to win. That's tomorrow assuming you guys regular. get there. That's yeah, assuming you guys get there, there because tomorrow. So, sorry, I'm sorry, but your guys are going to lose tomorrow. Sorry, Rick. Well, what was that? Couldn't hear you guys from all the way down the bottom of the standings. Can, you have to speak up. I said louder. Did, didn't you guys blow a three-one series lead with a 135 point season last year? That's last year, buddy. That and is look where a we are. And look, joke. and look where we are now, buddy. We're still at the top of the league. I don't care. You better win with a when fucking it bumpkin team. Tell me I I'm wrong. I don't care. Win when it matters. You have one player that's won a couple. Alex, we're years. sitting right on the outside of the bubble. Shut up. Yeah, listen. Keep talking garbage, is, buddy. We've been place. good for. I'm looking like a fish, like Alex. Bump, 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 bump. Like it, it, it's, it's it's fine, Alex. I'd rather talk lose, Alex, to me. I'd rather miss the playoffs. Talk to me when you actually make the playoffs oh, and can man, actually make an nominal. impact. Yeah, or even crazy. better yet, talk I to me when one of your players don't get arrested. I'd uh, rather oh. miss the playoffs than choke mm, a one hundred. Who got arrested? Wait, oh whoa, shit! Whoa. Fuck you. Who got arrested? I want to know. Nobody did. Carter Hart. No, no, he's not actually convicted yet. Don't play that. Card. No, I'm convicted, but not arrested. He got arrested. He got arrested. No, he did get arrested. Okay, yeah, let's move arrested. on from yeah, this. Yeah, let's move on, please. No, no. Arrested. Yeah, no, uh, uh, exactly okay, but we're doing trash. You can move talk. on. We're but you can move on for now, but we're going to talk about it later. But that's okay. I'm not. I'm, <laughs> don't remind. Okay. Don't make me remind you guys signed Miller. <laughs> By the way, it's too bad Matt couldn't make it, eh? Yeah. Who? Where Matt, yeah. Matt, yeah. Anyway. Ghost. It's too bad. And he still has no comeback. Say something. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah, you're here now. Say we, we know you're here. Say, say something. Is a quiet we get it. You have you're a handsome here. fucking face, buddy, and you're here I'm for the here. looks. We get, ladies and gentlemen, we would not have our viewership today if it wasn't for the wonderful voice and looks of, of Mr. Matt Norton. Present. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll see myself out. <laughs> Brought to you by Sam w- Wismer. 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 I can't read that shit. It's too small. Rick, make these things larger. Sam, just remember, he's the I, one that talked crap about right. Alex Lyon, not me. I didn't talk crap well, about Alex Lyon. He didn't. What, he didn't. I didn't. I said I like them. They're not. Am I wrong to say that they're not playing to the pedigree that they should? He talked shit about Alex Lyon. Alex, shut up. <laughs> yeah, anyway, shark Lyon. bait. Let, yeah, I want to be honest. About... Alex, now that we're talking about Alex Lyon again, uh, he's a phenomenal guy. I've interviewed him a lot and a uh, very likable guy in the locker room. You could talk. He's one I'd like to have a beer with. Uh, uh, he, he, he's he's a talk, good dude. Man. He, he, is, he talks more than me. Uh, I've never <laughs> met him. Like oh, then you pair him up with Alex. Jamie, Jamie, you fit good. in like a glove here with how much we all talk. Do 20 minutes, like he sits down in his stall. Hey, what's going on? You know what I mean? And uh, he's just, yeah, very nice. He is a nice boy. 
I have a question for Alex. Who the fuck is we? When you say we, when we all talk, who the hell is we? We mean you. Me and you and, and a little bit of Rick. And a little bit of Rick. <laughs> oh, here we go. She's pulling out the... Yeah, the Alex Lyon jersey's out. Listen. All right, Jamie. I'm sorry. Did I have a sign? No, I need, I need did she just pull something out of the garbage? I, I need a this second. What, what? You, you tell, so that's not trash talk on your goal. Uh, well, I had to do it there because that was just for the well, meme, buddy. It's it's my uh, Phantoms jersey. So um, that's your favorite Phantoms jersey. Where where he got ninety four out of you know not ninety four saves out of ninety five shots during a playoff game, but you know that five OT game. That's where that was from. No, wow. that's not what that's from. I'm just saying that's, uh, that's the type of goaltender he is there, he's Cam. He's not a bad goaltender. He's just yeah, not he's playing good. to the pedigree like of which they need to. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Awesome. Let's talk about my painful team. No. no Jamie, not. I need your optimism here. I am a defeated man after this yeah. la- after especially after that Columbus game. After I'm tomorrow after night. Man. You will be after tomorrow night. I yes. need your positive talk to I'm give me I'm waiting for Montreal to get stomped. What is Watch it going to take for this team to turn it around? And really make a push at this. I think the Flyers win tomorrow six to one. And oh, I think that oh, yeah. I also I also <laughs> I also believe that they'll they'll probably lose to the Rangers uh you know on Thursday on Thursday night. But uh I think that six to one. Yeah, six to one. And uh I, like I think I think they'll lose to the Rangers four to one. I think that you know what would they play Saturday? The Saturday, right? Saturday. Yeah, the That's Devils. the Wayne Simmons game they too. Should, they should win that three to two, but I think they'll lose the final game of the year to the Caps. I I, I don't know. The, the, the Caps are one of those teams, man. The fuck struggle. Yeah, it's... This, this man is like a freaking roller coaster ride of wins and losses. I love. <laughs> I need him on my. I need him on my team right now. The six I, to one win over Montreal. Yeah, Listen, it's going to be completely dominated them the first game around. Going like, to I don't know if it's going to be that bad, but I think it'll be four, closer. Three, four, three, Montreal in overtime. In probably Just to add in it. overtime. Oh, yeah, 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 with salt and wound there. Wait, four, do you guys know Montreal who's starting in, in net tomorrow for the Flyers? Is it Fedotov? <laughs> Who wants to put money on that goddamn game? <laughs> I will. I'll put twenty dollars on Montreal. <laughs> yeah, Sam Erson's definitely starting tomorrow. Yeah, I think Erson. Yeah, you're tomorrow. getting Monty. Uh, you might get no. I'd rather uh, get Monty. No, Primo's played too I, good against us. Yeah, no. Wait, I just thought of it. it's Philly. We might. You're probably gonna get Primo. I'd rather get Monty. Monty's not playing. Monty's had a couple of rough games where, and Primo's bailed him out. You're getting Primo probably tomorrow, but you're probably getting Monty actually. Well, who started I'm last night? The game. I am Primo scared about last the game, one. But I think I think that they do well tomorrow. I really do. Mon- Monty. I really I hope think they, they do tomorrow. end up winning tomorrow, really but do. I don't think it's going to be of that margin. They're, you're getting Monty. Monty's had two bad games, rough games. He's bouncing back tomorrow, and he's shutting you fucking guys down. What? It, it's not even just that, Jamie. So I'll explain why I don't think it's going to be that large of a margin. It, you might be right on the amount of goals scored for the Flyers, but I think you. Will likely be wrong on the amount of goals scored for Montreal. If it's Urson, he's played a lot. He's played a lot, and for someone yeah. to just jump in as a rookie like that, four I, three Montreal. No, I'm I'm actually thinking like the game might be closer. It might be like six to four, might be six to five. Matt, where the fuck are you to back me up, man? Oh, Could kiss be. I mean, my ass. Ass. Hold on. You guys get all the backup in the world, Mister. I get Harry and Matt, and then like you know, Alex has Jamie and Sam. And look I'm at me, I'm old. the lone bruiser. I'm not claim I'm, I'm an old and feeble man. Have have pity on me. Oh, I'm sorry. Are we being ageist? Yes, I am. Oh, well, womp, I womp, another I do not claim Alex. I you don't am. need to claim Alex, but he's on. You guys are all That's Flyers right, fans. That's you all know what? <laughs> Bruins fan is the lone bear. Like, you know what? It's fine. Okay? I don't Alex, need help. That's why. Alex, I have good enough arguments on my own. Here, Here's the thing that uh, you fail to realize is Jamie will always like me more than he likes you. So... <laughs> when I, this isn't a competition. I'll tell okay. you this. The Bruins are a hell of an organization. They really know what the hell That's fine, doing. Sam. I also like... Watch oh, I like say. Jamie more than you, Alex. 
so much more than you. You have no idea. He just, he just, the ego exploded. Which uh, every time what? we, every time we play NHL now on on Xbox, dude, I'm just gonna refer to you as Jamie just to make me a little happier. I mean, that's well, the Bruins. I'm being referred to as Jamie. Everyone one. thought the Bruins were dead in the water last year before the season began. Right I did. Away. I was one of those. I was. Yeah. I, yeah. You say that every year. Got that well, right. Good there. That's, what when that's what happens when you get good coaching. That's what happens when you get good coaching. You're right, Jamie. I think you're 100 right there. Yeah. Yeah. Every everyone after last year was just like, oh well, after the the departure of like those nine players, the Bruins aren't going to do a damn thing. Oh. This year again, I thought the same fucking thing, and I was wrong. No, it was, no, it was over. No, it was over the summer. They're just like, no, there's no way they're going to be that good. Last year, I actually saw them being good. They had Hall, Bergeron, Krejci. You're telling me that the, that team wasn't slated for success, right? That was a good team last year. It just seems like it doesn't matter who that one could go down. Another one comes from like the woodwork. They come yeah. from the street. They pluck them off the street or something. But they're all like homegrown players too. They love their homegrown players. The thing yeah. with that Bruins organization, Boston always they have did, so good at building defensemen there. They have By always the way, had Boston, a good line and good net mining presence. Goal and Boston defense. Always Boston always had a heavy defenses. Boston local flavor to the team. Always did yeah. uh, that I remember since a, since I'm a yeah. kid. Mm. I'll keep talking. Keep talking. Music, music to my ears. Music, um, yeah, music. But, but, but huge. They did have the great, but Montreal always beat them. That's the yeah. I remember always in the playoffs. You, got, you know, you know guys. what? You know what? You, Alex, and Matt love to live in the past. I'm looking towards the future, baby. Yeah, another yep. long playoff series. Yep. Remember that too many <laughs> men on the ice penalty back in '78. Wait, which one? which one? No, I wasn't playoff. born. I don't think I was even a Last thought year, back then. Maybe 2019 when you got Gloria. Maybe in 2016 when you collapsed worse than we are right now. Maybe 2010 when you blew a 3-0 series lead. Maybe 2013 when. When was the last time happened. you guys won a cup? I knew that was coming. 93. Oh, I, I knew it. I knew it. Like I yeah, no. Honestly, if you're gonna make all these things like, hey, remember this, remember that, remember this, remember that. Okay, fine. So I'll just say, when was the last time you guys actually it. made it to a cup I final? It. I knew it. Was we coming. made it. 20, 2021. 2010. You. 2010. You made it to I'm a cup final, the and then you got here. stomped. Yeah, you get stomped. We lost in six games. You yeah, but stopped. you think about it. Think about it. If they had Carter Hart, just think about that. Oh, if, if they, they had, had him, right then, <laughs> I love the if. I would have won a cup. They would have swept them. Yeah, just yeah. as long as there were no they, young they, girls. They had, had good goaltending in 2010. They won the cup. Yeah, if he wasn't different. arraigned, he, if he wasn't arraigned, he'd be fine. Why yeah, even had as average as goaltending in 2010? They won the cup. But, but yeah. to think that listen, all we need. Huh? Go ahead, Jamie. Uh, no, go ahead, Sam. Ladies first. As, I was going to say all, all they need to do is just you know sign me to a contract and we'll we'll, we'll get that. Cup you and back. Jamie need to get on that fucking team. Mitch, cough, Mitch, cough, Mitch. We'll cough, have Mitch, okay. Let's have we'll that. Have Sam at the point. Got, we'll have Sam at the point. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not revisiting the Mitch Cove argument. I Come don't on. want my computer okay. to blow up. I, I we can't. Hear what, I can't do it. Listen, I'm gonna vomit. We asked Sam on uh, the Have Normals podcast what she thought. We know what Alex thinks. Jamie, your opinion on Mitch Cove? Love to hear it. I think it's phenomenal. Uh, dude already has me already has me thinking 2025 26. Uh, I think he's going to be a hell of a talent. Uh, he's an elite player. Um, finally, they have a, a somewhat of a generational talent in the system, something that the Flyers haven't had since Lindros. Uh, I, I, I'm being honest with you. This dude is going to be a beast. He's going to come in and wreak some havoc. It may take a year or two, you know, but he'll find his niche. He'll find his niche. I think he'll be a 35, 40 goal scorer for the Flyers. How many ah, you know what? The That's the first honest. Like, I like what he said. He didn't that feel is like a, a generational. Very... He went to elite. I like that. He's, generational. he's got the right goal. Somewhat. Number. He said somewhat generational. Yeah, he, he's, okay, yeah. but that's, that's fair. Said borderline generational. No, border, but, no. But he has there's, the right goal. There's a numbers difference between and somewhat I, and borderline. Awesome, Jamie. I I, I respect that. I don't Jamie, totally do agree with it, but I respect that these. opinion. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I because the I, other guy there in the middle is he's he's off he'll, the wall. Let him see. I, I just asked a question. I think he'll be personally. I think he'll be a 100 point scorer. That's what I said. Yeah, but like per season. But so is no. Pasternak. But no, I wouldn't I call Pasternak generational. I say on his good. He's a high end elite player. 
I, I say he, he'll swing salt. up to a hundred. I don't know that it's a regular. Oh, it's not going to be right away. I just think no, I, I just right think it'll be right away. The way he's that. going to score some of these goals, I think you'll see, and his creativity is really going to shine, and you're going to see. Oh wow, he is like uh, sort of like Alex Ovechkin. I don't think he's going to be as good as Alex Ovechkin. I don't think you know what I mean. But what Alex about Ovechkin. what about if in the first month? Yeah, NHL players watch him do these things. And the second month, they go, yeah, you're not doing that again. And what? Uh, yeah, he's going to have to fight through the ro rookie wall. E every rookie does. You know, and it, it could take maybe 10, maybe 11, maybe even 20 games. I think he'll hit I think he'll hit a slump, but that will show him what type of player. I, actually, I was happy he struggled a bit, you know, early in the season in the KHL this year um, because I think that that helps him. I think that helps him grow grow into the player he's going to become. He was almost a point per game guy on the worst team in the cage. He was, well, but worst team he was being game. benched here, benched there. I think that's what's going to happen. Right. It may happen at the NHL level. He might be benched, you know, for a game. He might be benched for two games. But I think that I, I think, yeah, he'll I, have I an adjustment he here. Like he got away with some stuff I saw in some highlights in the KHL. He's going to get nailed and knocked on his ass so fast doing See, that. That's yeah. what I think. It's going to be an adjustment. I, I have a concern with the He's Flyers. going to be a great player, and he's going to be a 30 to 40 goal scorer. But generational, I think, is a stretch until he proves he's generational. That's all yeah. I'm saying. If he proves See, it, I have he a proves general it. concern. That's a fair. That's fair. That's fair. I have a general concern with the Flyers is that all your young talent and your older talent, they're not aging well together. That's a big problem. Do you guys notice that they on your really roster? I do. Yeah, but, I do. I, I'm very that's, concerned about uh, Look like, how the Habs are being put together. So that I'm gonna doesn't be honest happen. with you. It's like for the Flyers, you know, uh, in their system, it's like Mitch Top or Bus. And, uh, you know, like, and, and then the like, you're, you're seeing the high end talent drop dramatically after that. The but I, I think there's one player that, you know, a lot of people aren't talking about right now, and that's Denver Barkey. I think yep. he, he reminds me a lot of uh, Travis Konechny. And I think that he, he models his game at the Braden point, but um, I, he really reminds me of how Travis Konechny really came out and evolved. And then, uh, you know, in 2015, made his way, you know, to training camp, made the team. Nobody knew nothing about him. Now the Flyers, you know, Flyers fans love Denver Barkey. A lot of people know a lot about him. I actually think he makes a squad next year coming out of uh, training camp, believe it or not. He had a 102-point season in uh, out in London this year. Him and Oliver Bonk seemed like they, they mixed yeah. like this. They were You're fantastic. Both it, but I think Denver will. I, I Bonk has a harder position. Yeah, Bonk has a little bit of time to go. I absolutely agree. You know, Plus, there's a long jam on defense already. Defense is a hard position to play. To be a time, for sure. You know, um, uh, it, defense and goaltending, uh, it, they, those are the two hardest positions. And Montreal's well, going to be you're, fucking you're low. Blame, you're blamed the most. Defense Montreal's going to be the most. And Montreal yeah. is about to be loaded indeed. No one cares. Um, <laughs> no, but my biggest well, concern with, with the Flyers is your center position. And I, oh, um, I Danny, oh, yeah. Danny will address that, I have no doubt. But if you look at it now, just now, okay. Sean Couturier is 33. He's going to be 36 yeah. by the time Mitchkov comes here. Yeah. He's a, I think he's only 30, 30 right now. I don't think oh, sorry. 30. 31. He's 31. I'm sorry. He's 31. I was looking at somebody else that was 33. So he's going to be 34. So that's about Brad Marchand's age now. So, And I'm already seeing a decline in Sean Couturier's Any, game. Anybody oh, yeah. who's 28 or older right now, if you want, when Mitchkov gets here, they got to be gone. You yeah. got to be bringing in young guys or else you're not going to match up with Mitchkov. Yeah, well, I, 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 I think you're going to see Sanheim and Katoria here, regardless, just based off their contracts. Well, They're, you need a I couple of vets. Really, uh, th you need some vets. To add a center. They have to add a center. Uh, yeah. I, I don't care how they do it, whether it's at the draft, you know, and trading a pick because they have capital to get to uh, trade now to to move, you know. So like they could trade, they could trade some picks, maybe possibly move up and snatch a center. Or that would be the easiest way to do it. Or they could go the hard route and then go into uh, battles, you know, for a center. And I, I don't think there's a plethora of centers, you know, this year in the free agency prop that uh, it, that screams, yes, I want the Flyers to go add that center. So they're going to have to do it via trade. That's I what I was going to say. Or, or, or at the draft, you know. Yeah, at, I think it'd be the trade or draft. Or, I'm not, I don't think they go in terms of riches and free agency. 
Yeah. They, but depends because if the if there's a center willing to do it at free agency, but I I see Sean Kateri, you you guys are gonna have problems at center and that team yeah, as a whole. Oh, yeah, I, you're, I don't you're absolutely right. right. You, you'll get no out, argument out of me. I think that's why they yeah. need to keep Morgan Frost. Actually, I would have signed Morgan Frost longer than a two year deal. I probably would have done a yeah. four just because of that. He's gonna just, get a, a not, significant pay raise. Yeah, not for nothing, and it's not because. You know, he's my favorite player. If Tanner Lozinski could get his act together and translate his game to the NHL level, yeah. he could provide depth as a center. I mean, he is one of the leading goal scorers in Lehigh right now. He has a few chances here, and it just doesn't seem like it ever clicks. Now, mind yeah. you, I don't think his ice time is all that good. But it just never seems like it clicks when he gets those opportunities. Only like Joe really just finally got his first goal, and he's done a lot of good. But things. Alex, you got to realize the man had two hip surgeries back to back. Oh, I'm you don't you don't come injured. back from that easily. That's and a year or, or at all. That's That's a year or or I'm not holding it, it against him. Yeah. It's just he it just he hasn't. I feel like it's not all his fault because he hasn't been given an appropriate amount of ice time. It seems like he always gets bottom six time when he's brought up. They don't give him that middle six opportunity they've given like Zell, but they, they need to give this guy a true opportunity to see if they're going to have him play that. I think it's well, a mix. And, and here's, here's my thing is if they didn't see something in him, I think they would have traded him at the deadline. Like they traded Wade Allison. And we know how much of a fan you are of Wade Allison. So here's, <laughs> I will keep my comments to myself. Uh, uh, I I, I share the the same feeling on that. One guy to watch. One guy to watch is Sam Tumala next year. Here's my bold prediction with the Flyers. You guys are going to be good for just a short period of time until a dramatic retool is going to need to happen. Because over the next two drafts here, I doubt you're going to get that one C that you guys so desperately need. And I think it's, you're going to need to get it soon. You're going to need to get them developing. I definitely see that your yeah. defense is also not young. It's getting a lot older. So by the, de- because you know, you have that star forward coming in that's taking that into consideration. Yeah. You guys will be good for maybe two to three years. And then you're going to need to either do a heavy retool but yeah, I don't see another rebuild coming. But I think Danny's going to need to get creative on how this re- – if he wants this rebuild to happen fast, he needs to get thinking on on ways to get it done quick because I definitely see that the age the age yeah. is going to play a huge factor because they're not yeah, I aging I definitely don't together. want them to do it fast, that's for sure. I want them to go at their own pace and, and right. what they – you know, do it do it slow, do it right. Uh, but do it right. I think that – and you also, know, the good thing about the Flyers that they have going for them is that Cam York really took the next step this season. Mm-hmm. And I think that I he has evolved into maybe maybe not a 1A, but a, at least a 1B defenseman. So that helps them there. If Drysdale, the, the wild card is Drysdale. If Drysdale can, he's only 21, so there's still plenty of. Just turned 22 today, actually. Today, but like, he's, he's still young enough. To be that quasi, you know, one A, possibly, maybe, maybe a middle pairing defenseman. I think that'll that'll suit them well. Give but. him some time in your training camp. Oh, sure. Because you know, yeah. we we we, we see yeah. NHL experts say this all the time. Like it's difficult for players to come in on a team in the middle of a season and trade deadline because they might not start playing well until the playoffs if they're in there. So you got to take a look at it. Like if they actually have a full yeah. training camp, I mean, you looked at Hall after one training camp with the Bruins, he got a lot better. Morgan Geeky, who is doing better now later in the season, but if he goes through another training camp, I bet you like keep people like Geeky Boquist, they'll get better because yeah. it's another year in the system that they're getting accustomed yeah, yeah, yeah. to. Yeah, um, it'll be interesting. A defenseman, sorry, Jamie, a defenseman that they really, the Flyers really, I mean, he's on his last year, and Jamie knows where I'm going with this. He is having a not a career year, but a, like just defensively, Mason Millman. Mm-hmm. He is having a fantastic year. He is now over 100 professional points. And every time he gets uh, sent to Lehigh, he's either not played or he plays bottom yeah. minute. He needs to play that middle minute portion mm-hmm. because you're not going to see what the kid has. You see what yeah. he has at the ECH level, level, but that's not good enough. Like the, yeah. e- the ECHL is a great league. It's a crazy league, but it's a great league. Millman needs to get out of it. Millman needs to be in the AHL. He is too good of a defenseman to not be in the AHL. 
Little guy. Yeah, I, 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 I was when the Flyers made that selection for Millen, I was pretty high on it. Uh, not like high, like jumping off, you know, jumping up and down, but uh, I liked it. Um, he, he was a, he was a more of a lankier kid, uh, you know, coming up, you know, through the ranks there. So I was like, okay, he's got to get, you know, bigger and stronger, like, like all 18 year olds, right. All 17, 18, 19 year olds need to do. Right. But, um, I don't exactly know what has transpired in terms of his growth or development, but he is having a, like Sam said, he is having a really good year, you know, for the Royals and he is intermixing between the Phantoms and the Royals. But I, I don't know with the Flyers contractual threat to contracts nearing the contractual limit of uh, 50. I, th- I think they sit at 49. So they got one contract to offer. I could see Millman possibly being out of the system. I see Tanner Lazinski possibly being out of the system. I see, you know, a few others, you know, possibly being out of the system because of such. It, it's just, it, it's, I do agree with you, Sam. I'm hoping what I think is that the Phantoms sign him to a deal. And so he's still with the club, and then the Flyers can see what, what happens, and then, you know, maybe take a look at him. Out of – and sorry, I, I know we, we should move on. Uh, out of both Lazinski and Millman, I would rather see Millie here. And I love Tanner. I would rather see yeah. Millie be here and make himself the defenseman that – I've seen him play all year. You guys bring up a yeah. lot of wonderful play. I mean, you guys have shown some a tremendous knowledge. So I'm actually, I'm really glad we got you guys on, especially some of the AL and Alex disappeared. Hey, he Houdini, he Houdini the fuck out of here. Um, wow. Oh, Dips out on his own show. Um, no, you guys, you guys bring up a good point. I'm actually really glad you guys came up because you guys provide wonderful and Sam wonderful insights into the AHL and Jamie. Just the attitude yeah. is is quite honestly. So I just wanted to get in there and say that before I lose a chance and before I forget because I'm Polish and things happen. Um, uh, I wanted to move to who you guys th- and we'll Sam. We'll start with you with ladies first, and you know Jamie. Then we'll move right to you. Um, now that Mister Interrupt is gone, uh, let's move to who do you guys think gets the M3, let's start with that. Oh, and then yeah. apologies, everyone. My uh my thing crashed. Uh, I don't know how we that are happens. doing so well. Um, we're gonna start with who you guys think gets the M3, because that's also up for grabs, and then who ends up in the WC2 because Tampa has already claimed the the WC one and they're not getting caught. Um Sam. Uh, for WC two, oh, oh, I'm gonna be hated. I am at Pittsburgh. Okay, that's very <laughs> valid. M th- and for M three, M three, Metro three. Oh, okay. I'm gonna defer to my partner up top here. Okay, she doesn't have an opinion. Let that be known, I, guys. I, 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 Someone who I think, never mind. I can't a, a woman nope. without an opinion. No. Damn it, Rick. I, can't. <laughs> I said it. I said oh, it. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Good. I you have opinions. Oh, <laughs> shit. I was gonna say, Rick, you can get us in trouble. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna go and Massa, say that. It would have uh, been Cam's a joke. not touching that. Cam's no. Not touching that. Nope. nope. No, the ten foot fucking pole, dude. Not any chance. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait. Oh, we're well past the five minute mark. I can swear. Um, Jamie. Um, M. Oh God, we'll start with WC two, and then we'll do the deferral to M three. Yeah, I, I, I see the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins uh, doing WC two, and I, I see the uh, New York Islanders uh, being the Metro three. Uh, I, I am pretty high on the Flyers. I just think that they win tomorrow night against the Habs. I think they lose against the Rangers. Win Saturday. And I, but I think they lose to the Caps. Uh, I think that that's going to be I, I, for whatever reason, man. That they, 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 the Caps just have their number, especially at home. I don't know why. Uh, why they continue to beat. Them. But um, I just think the Flyers are a bit gasped right now, and I don't know if they have that oomph that they need. The extra, they definitely have the motivation. I don't think that that 
ever been a question. I don't think the effort's ever been a question. I don't think I think they're playing her butts off. I just think they're gassed. Yeah. There Very was good. a oh, seven. No, sorry, there was a seven game stretch, and this is talking about uh, the Royals, who are unfortunately, even with the loss of the Newfoundland Growlers last week, are mathematically eliminated from playoff contentions the first time. And Jamie, I think what it's probably the yeah. second time in franchise history. Yeah, it's only um, the second time in 14 seasons. Yeah. It's only it's the second time in 13 seasons that they have been eliminated mathematically. Um there was a seven game stretch where they needed to win. And what killed them was the Worcester Railers weekend at home where they just got clobbered. Um yeah. you can't lose games in such a short in such a pressured amount of like it was like seven games within the span of like a week and a half. It was like seven games in 10 days. You can't do that. And I think that's what <coughs> happened to the Flyers is like they're on a seven game losing streak and you, you can't be losing like that. Not this close to the end of the season. Right. I get it, Sam. I know exactly what you mean. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. It's like if they would have won or t- at least taken one point from this past weekend, I'd feel a little better. You know, maybe, 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 maybe. But uh, I don't know. I, I it's just an honest opinion. I'm hoping for the fire. But uh, you know, my honest assessment, I, I I just think that they're a big ass. And I think that you know, like you bring up a great point you made earlier about Samuel Urson. I think he's a big ass. Um, I hope I'm wrong. I, I I really do. Alex WC two then M three. I'm gonna go. Go the aisles, W uh, the Metro three. WEC two, I'm gonna go off a little bit with this. I'm gonna say Detroit. I'm gonna stick with Detroit, believe it or okay. not. I, Any uh, reason on Detroit? Because um, he doesn't want me to hurt him. No, that's not the reason. That's valid reason, point. Very I'm valid point. Detroit mainly because I think that the young talent's gonna step up. Okay. You know, they got through a very tough gauntlet. I said a few weeks ago when Washington got through their gauntlet, it was time for Detroit to start winning some tough games. And yeah. while they didn't win many, they're still in this right now. They do have a game against Pittsburgh Thursday. They have a game against Washington tomorrow. I think they beat Washington tomorrow personally. Um, I think Washington has read a lot on Lindgren, and I think that muster is running out. I think the Capitals and, are going to fall And off Carlson. That they're driving John Carlson into the ground. Yeah. So I think Washington's going to fall out of this completely. I could would not be surprised if Washington's won another game the rest of the year. So, mm-hmm. But I think Detroit gets the wild card too, and we're the first team out because everything is pain in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, WC2, then M3. WC2, I'm going to go with Pittsburgh. I think Sidney Crosby's going to make sure that this team gets to the postseason. Um, I'm going to say Islanders keep that. And one of the reasons why the Flyers don't make it is because we're going to beat them tomorrow and spoil it for them. <laughs> we shall see. Yeah, that's Dude, if just... it happens, man, I'm going to come over there and give you a big fat hug, dude. Uh, you know, <laughs> like you are like, it's been uh, really cool to see you. Yeah. To me? Uh, You're talking about me? Yeah, absolutely, oh, Rick. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate. Yeah, that. I think that I, I, man, it's been awesome on this show for real. You've been. I it, it, appreciate it. having you, Jamie. You, yeah, oh yeah, no, you guys, you, guys have, you guys have been fun. We like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, appreciate well, that. you appreciate him, fun. Alex. But you don't appreciate me. Yeah, <laughs> Alex. What the fuck is wrong with you? Appreciate her. <laughs> Did you not? Okay, I want you to rewind this when the stream sends. And I <coughs> specifically, say Jamie and Sam. No, yeah. you make fun Jamie. of me, so I, I don't appreciate you, you as much. <laughs> just just. Well, Sam, he does have a girlfriend, so he does need to, you know, keep up gotta appearances. Play the so he's got to play the part. Secretly, he adores you. Are we no, getting ready for overtime by chance? Don't I keep? Oh my God! I, I, I do. I get a turn. See, no one loves the Bruins fan. It, I'm yeah, I, I forgot about you, Cam. 
You know what, guys? My work personality is sunshine yellow, and you guys are really dampening it down, man. You're bringing down the shadow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you eclipsed my son. What does Mickey think? Oh God. Who are your son? Any. Uh, for WC two, um, you know, I'm actually gonna start with M three. For M three, I'm gonna actually have Pittsburgh. Um, I think they might overtake. The Islanders, I don't have that much faith in the Islanders. I think they will collapse. Uh, WC2, um, I'm going to – I think the Islanders will be the WC2. I was oh, wow. I was going to try and give some hope to the Flyers. I just look at the Rangers. I don't think they can surpass them. Montreal might give you guys a tough time. Everyone's you giving might us lose, a tough time. Yeah. yeah. I just don't see it. I honestly, personally, if I'm going to tell you guys, I would love to see the Flyers in the playoffs just to get eliminated. But that's besides the point. Um, I no, I think with that, I like. I, at least we got there. No, but I like Cinderella stories, and I think that would have been a wonderful Cinderella story for the Flyers to get in after the year that they've yeah, had. I yeah, I honestly, um, my I agree. My honorable mention is the WC two for the the Flyers. That's my hope. Just because I want to see a Cinderella story happening. We need two teams to to from this show in. It would be better. <laughs> yeah. No, it's fine. I, I enjoy watching you suffer. Not Jamie yeah, or yeah. Sam, but I you you specifically. <laughs> like I'm sorry for Jamie and Sam as they have to watch this team, but you your tears sustain me, buddy. If I could fill a glass with your tears, I'd drink it right in front of you. And then I'd spit <laughs> it right back at your face. That's how this would go. Alex and I are actually good friends. We don't really hate each other. We love to hate each other. He's like the hemorrhoid I never wanted. (laughs) Um, And you're like that pimple right on my nose. (laughs) You can't really see it in my background, but um, I do have a non-Flyers jersey. I do have a Calder Cup winning Mike Vecchione Hershey Bears jersey. I thought she was going to say Alex Lyon. Thank you. And I would have lost my mind. Mike Vecchione. Saugus, Massachusetts needed Mike Vecchione. They're about to do it again. By the way, you know Chris Kreider? Is he on Washington's farm system still? Yes, he's uh, he's with Hershey. Alex, you know Chris Kreider? Yes. He's from Stoneham. I'm not surprised. There's a lot of... NHL players from around here. As a half fan, we, was from Marblehead. As a half fan, uh, we'd like to stone him. My friend, my, wow, my friend's dad, my friend's dad knows his knows his dad. They yeah, they've gotten to meet. So he, that's I think pretty Yandel's cool. from here. Said, Kevin him. Hayes obviously is from Dorchester. Uh, oh, the God, I, the now I have game. Alex going on a tar- tangent. The Pens game is still one one, tied at the end of the second. Go oh, pens. Okay. I do. I really do. I not because I want the pens to win, but I just really want Toronto to lose. Yeah. Um, anybody against Toronto. Anybody. No, anyone against Pittsburgh. I'm rooting for Toronto tonight. Sorry. No, no. <laughs> oh, that's the it. Alex. The pens. No, no, My Alex, you're done now. Pittsburgh pens burns with the fiery passion of a thousand suns. Alex is now an ex-partner. <laughs> I was, Toronto. I don't get, listen. I don't like the Leafs either. It's very fun to make fun of them. But I will go on a tirade of my hatred for the Pittsburgh Penguins. I, 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 um, I was telling the guys that were here before the show, I interviewed uh, the captain of Wilkes-Barre last night, Taylor Fadon. He was a draft pick for the Edmonton Oilers. And I mm-hmm. asked him at the end of the interview, I said, you know, build your three-on-three OT lineup. I was like, it can include you. And he, <laughs> he chirped back. He's like, yeah, no shot. Um and the three on his OT lineup were Crosby, McKinnon, McCarr. Wow. That's a good lineup. That sounds about right. Speaking of overtime, um, for those of you guys who are new to the show, we at the end we do an overtime segment because we typically go overtime. But around bump bump. So it's a funny time. So overtime is basically where we ask a series of questions, typically five. They can be brief. They can be long. It depends on how many questions we have. And it depends on if first Rick has a senior moment or not. So, Rick. <laughs> Okay, before we get to that, I just, I've been waiting for this too. I want to unveil my, uh, just a part of my upcoming new video, a poem I just wrote. Um, So it's just, it's a minute. The Montreal Canadian seasons and nears, and it really wasn't one of their best years. It's still a rebuilding year. Did they not impress? If you couldn't, well, I did see all of their progress 
So many one-goal games, and Slaff is not a bust. In the number one line, we sure do trust. The tankers out there scream, we gotta lose every game. They are seventh from the bottom. Most of the year it stayed the same. So much more fun to watch them play. Look how they compete. Lately playing a full game. 60 minutes so complete. Spoilers for the Avs, the Flyers and Panthers too. Nick and Slaff just tearing it up. Caulfield's shot got through. The defensemen need to get some praise or Arbor might knock me silly. Caden Primo gets some too. So great last week in Philly. Eight games left. Six from the bottom now. This is where they rank. They'll finish there amazingly without trying to tank. What happened there? That was so beautiful. I okay, but what happened? Something knocked off. it out. I don't it wasn't, know. Was it bad. wasn't done. Okay, we'll leave it there. Well, that was good. I mean, the best part of that poem was saying that you were sixth from the bottom. Well, we are. I Actually, just walked back to normal today. recording, by the way. Yeah, you knocked my palm out. Yeah, way to go, jackass. Well, jackass. when you brought up the primo Philly part, I had no choice. Yeah, wow. And now we'll poetry. See. We'll see. We'll see. With we'll Rick. see for next week. Overtime. Rick. Overtime. I, I've only got two questions. Um, the first shit, one Tim. is this uh, Jack Guy, Arbor Jack Guy, Matt Rampey, and this guy, Ryan Reeves. Have they reinvigorated the heavyweight fight in the NHL and possibly the return of the NHL goon? So two parts. So two parts, guys. So have they reinvigorated the heavyweight bout? But also, does this mean that there could be a return of enforcers and goons in the league? I'm um, going to go with no. I see more heavyweight fights in the ECHL than I see in the NHL all year. Yeah, but the ECHL, I mean, that's known for... It doesn't matter. I still see more. <laughs> so with respect to the NHL, though, do you think a guy like Rempe, Arbor Jack guy, or guys like them, and Ryan you know, Reeves, even though he's been in the league for a long time, do you think they're moving that this dial towards that that style? Do you think they're going to reinvigorate it? I mean, it's a style, but I don't think it's going to reinvigorate like okay. heavyweights in the league. Do you think a player like Matt? So uh, the second oh. part was more geared towards Matt Rempe. And now, do you think that that could likely introduce goons back into the game? Yeah, I mean, there's always going to be goons, no matter what league, no matter what team. You're going to have your your goon squad. And now poetry with Jamie. <laughs> I, I I say yes and no. Uh, I I say the the no aspect because. Uh, I don't think you'll see them type of players play in the playoffs. Uh, I mean, they, a lot of times, unless they're able nowadays, unless they're able to pot a goal, maybe a t you know pot a goal or two, I'd say, then uh, typically they're, they're benched yeah. in the playoffs. So I would give the no to that goon aspect. It's not like it was with uh, Ty Domi and stuff like that. Um, but, yes, I do think it's been reinvigorated uh, for sure. Uh, you, you know, you – Matt Rems on the other side. I think that that was one of the uh, Achilles heels of the Flyers. They should have played uh, Nick DeLaurier the last time they played the Rangers, and they didn't. Uh, he was actually he was actually benched, and I was actually pretty pissed about it uh, that, that uh, towards benched uh, Nick DeLaurier with Matt Remp on the ice. I, I didn't understand that aspect, but it is what it is. So, yes, I think it has been reinvigorated. No to the goon aspect because I think that – the goon has to pot a goal or two. Gotta be able to play. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay if you're a goon and you can play, but if you're a goon and you can't play, then that's a then problem. You're just a dude yeah. bag. No, but, but that's a goon that can play is not a goon. Yeah. The, fa the fact that he's a goon is because he can't play. He, that's yeah. all he's got is the goony part. Doug Lat. Yeah. Going on uh, to at, the, at the risk of not having time for me to get my answer in, Alex, what do you think? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be short and sweet with this. Yeah, I feel like fighting has been probably, I won't say it's been more than usual, but I feel like it's had more of a spotlight on it this year. So in a way, I will say yeah. yes, but not to the degree that there's more fighting. It's just been more seen. Like We're paying more attention to it this year because of guys like that. 
Do I think yeah. goons are going to find their way back in the NHL? I, I don't see it really being much different than it is today. You need a lot more speed and skill to play in today's game compared to even five years ago, never mind 10 or 15 or 20 when fighting was a lot higher. So I'm going to say yes to a degree and no change from what it is right now. Wow, that was under a minute. All right, Rick. Uh, okay, so the first part, uh, does it uh, bring – yeah, I think that, um, it reinvigorates the heavyweight bout. Uh, I think fighting is always going to be part of the league. I think uh, fans like it uh, in general. But I think now looking forward to these matchups more, like I can say that because we've got Arbor Jack guy now. Uh, we haven't really had that heavyweight guy. And so I can say that, yeah, we look forward to it a bit, that if he's going to get into a fight, yeah, we're going to like it, right? So, yeah, I think the eyes are on it. it it's kind of reinvigorated. The goon, no, I'm going to agree with you guys. If you can't play hockey, you can't. You can't just be out there to fight and to do stupid shit. you got to be able to, able to play. And if you see like these guys, except for Ryan Reeves, who can't play, um, I don't know about Matt Rempe. I don't think he's he's a fourth liner, I think, right? Am I right? Uh, he's a defenseman, isn't he? Rempe? No, he's a fourth liner, I think. Anyway, I, I yeah, and I think it. Uh, you, we're not going to see the goons come back. You got to be able to play, and teams can't afford cap space for a guy that can't play. Um, I'll go. Um, I agree. Yeah, I agree with everyone. And, you know, it's kind of boring to kind of say, but um, yeah, you're right. By the way, you're right. He is a forward. I don't know why I thought he was a defenseman. Um. Yeah, I, I agree. I think they definitely reinvigorated the the heavyweight bout. I think a guy the league kind of did need a guy like Matt Rempe to kind of you know start waking teams up. Um, why are you? I don't take much time, Alex. Um, no, but I thought it was good. I think it's good that he's in the league, and I think it's going to cause like you know other players to watch their backs, and I think as they should. But I would think what the league needs to do with that is also teach people how to hit, how to take a hit, because I think that's not being taught well. And that's why Matt Rempe has the reputation that he does. Do I think that's gonna this whole thing is gonna incite more goons to enter the league? I also agree. No. Um, at least not now. But if the heavyweight bout continues, you will see teams sign players that are heavy hitters to match it. So we'll see where it goes. I don't think no for now, but if it goes at an increasing rate, there is potential. If we get more heavyweights of the Arbor Jack guy variety, and I mean that by that is that it can play hockey. It's a good players, good defenseman, it's good, you know, then no, we're not gonna if we're gonna get more like the Ryan Reeves type, who is totally full of shit and is there just to incite the crowd, that's what he gets off on, I think, and beating up on smaller guys, uh, then yeah, Gunnery will come back. But I mean, uh, Reeves is old, so that would have happened, I would think. I don't think it's going to happen. Got one more question. And uh, it was from before. I don't think uh, Jamie understood me what I said. Because just before uh, getting in here for the show, um, I saw one of your tweets about uh, something, I guess, Torts had said, where they admit that they knew they were going to lose Carter Hart at some point. Right? So anyways, I'm just asking this. Uh, or I say this, the Flyers admitted today they, know, they knew they would lose Carter Hart, just not when. This was confirmed by Torts. And I just thought, what are you guys' thoughts on that? Um, I kind of had a feeling um, in the beginning of the season when Carter would be in and out. Um, you know, Alex knows because he has a panic attack over a stubbed toe. Um, <laughs> when Carter Hart would be in and out of the lineup, I was like, mm, this, 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 a illness or his stomach problems. Um, yeah, buddy. Um, Hartsy, that's called stress. That's a stomach problem. Guilt. Called guilt. Living with that's guilt. That's called stress from a very big life event. Um yeah. I think they had that feeling. That's why we didn't get rid of Sandstrom. That's why Peterson was brought in. Um, and I got to say this for Danny B to pull off all of, all of he, what he has done in secrecy. That takes some, excuse my language, big balls. Well, but, I, 
I, I think they knew something when they were trying to move Carter Hart in the offseason. I think that was yeah, the first. Yeah, so quick. Because we were talking about it amongst us guys that uh, – does that, like, is, is it because they know something? Yeah, I think uh, anytime they did. you hear your number – Anytime you hear that your number one goaltender is in a subject of tons of rumors, uh, yeah, they were true. Uh, something was true. Teams may have gotten scared and was like, uh, why are they moving Carter Hart all of a sudden? Why are they doing this? Uh, no one truly knows what, why, you know, and what. It's all pure speculation, but the, the, the writing was on the wall. Uh, the writing was on the wall that this was going to come to light. This was supposed to shed light back in training camp. And right. it just carried over and carried over and carried over. Right. So I agree with Sam. That's one reason why they carried three net minders originally and didn't wave, you know, Felix Sandstrom. They waited and waited and waited until the prime time, you know, chance to do it. And they did it. And that was one of the reasons they needed all the goaltenders they could get. So they didn't have, you know, a few years ago where they used eight net miners. Yeah, yeah. Well, Philly's weakness has been net miners for a long time. Yeah. But I mean, this um, is this is coming from uh, your your number one net miner, Carter Hart. Yeah, yeah. Who's supposed to be the face of the franchise, and for this to happen, uh, yeah, Danny. We have to be shopping him. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Danny and I, listen, is, I'm too old and cynical. I'm too old and cynical not to believe that if not all the teams kind of knew who was who oh, the guys yeah. were. Yeah. Like I think they yeah. knew who they were, basically. Maybe not 100% confirmed, but they had to know. And, yeah, yeah that's, why nobody, that's why nobody bit on taking Carter Hart. Agreed. And that's Agreed. why they shopped him. Agreed. Yep. I'll tune in on this next. Um, yeah, I think they had some level of knowledge at the bare minimum dating back to the off season. And, you know, I find the way they answered this very interesting looking back at it when Hart really didn't give much of a comment and he needed to have his representative come out and say that he had nothing to do with it. Yeah. Um, that a lot of these guys are very adamant who are, innocent from the get-go at mm -hmm. trying to clear their name and came out and said something themselves where he didn't have that. He had an individual speak to him for him. And that kind of, I felt was strange at the time, but I, at the time gave him benefit of the doubt. And then obviously when you saw what they did, they took a contract in with Cal Pet uh, Peterson with a trade. Um, obviously uh, re-signed Sam Harris into a two-year extension you had Kolosov, and it was still working with Fedotov. At the time, we didn't think he was going to be ever coming over here. Now we know what we do, and he's here, which is incredible. But yeah, but those those two were never in the picture in the beginning. Oh. In the beginning, they brought in Peterson, and they brought in Parker Gahagan because they knew that they were going to have an issue. Yeah, there was a lot of moving pieces in all of this, but I think at the end of the day, what, where it really came down to was they definitely knew something, and a lot of these off-season moves that they made, mainly focused on Peterson and Urson's extension, really focused on that, not letting Sandstrom go, as Jamie stated. Yeah, I think that was a big thing, and I think just knowing they had these even potential guys overseas, too, that were a possibility, I think was part of a play into this as well. More so the guys that they already had and the guys that they brought in. So it was definitely – and then you know, I also drafted a goalie that wasn't even talked about in, uh, from uh, – who was it, Bajar Barnstrom? Um, Yarnison. So, so they, they, they've had – there was a lot of movie pieces. Another clue that teams knew was Alex Fermentin. Didn't they just let him go to, the, to Europe? I mean, he had some promise, uh, Ottawa. Ottawa let this kid – he had 18 goals one year. The next year they let him go to Europe. Yeah. So I think they, you know, there were they knew basically who these guys were. Yep. So. Yeah, Cam, you didn't check I, in. That, I got nothing to add. Got nothing to add. Who's taking us out then? Because I guess we're done. Well, I guess I'll do it. Um, 
everyone, thank you all for coming, Jamie and Sam. It was a pleasure having both of you guys here. Thank you. Um, awesome thank you. Uh, show. Hope yes, to have thank both you. of you back again sometime in the near future. Um, hopefully, we're revisiting yes. this a week from now where the Flyers are in a much better hope and giving me, me a lot of anxiety going into that Washington game and not looking at it as no. Yeah. That's we'll when you get muted. And for all you fans out there, don't forget to go check out the orthogonal videos that we have out there. Alex and I's Sin Bin, Hab Normals, and the new Bruins show, High Brew Nation. On Don't Welcome to media. the Black and Gold. Welcome to the Black and Gold. <laughs> Appreciate you I all. Have, Thank you so I much for fun. having me. Yeah, yo, Jamie. Yeah, we love having yes. you, man. I love the energy, dude. Like this guy brings it. I love it. He can come yeah. in anytime. Alex, anytime. Absolutely, absolutely. Anytime you guys Alex, want me to found... come on, I'll come on. Yeah. Well, we found Alex's replacement, so that's always a good thing. Yes. <laughs> oh, he's <laughs> Yes. So, so. Yeah, guys, don't forget about the after party that we have after every show. So don't worry about it. We... All right. But we where, are we taking okay? I guess I'm done. All, All right. right. So if you, you know. want to uh leave us a comment, if you have any ideas for future episodes. If you have any questions for us, you'd like us to talk about on future episodes, leave a comment. Uh, you can reach us by email at uh, what is it at pucking around podcast at gmail.com. Yep. And uh, yeah, so uh, we'll be back. Ne- I won't be back next week. I've wow. got a game. These boys will be back next week um, to talk it up and have a good time. Hopefully, you guys will check that out. And that's it. So yep. for this week, thanks to everybody. Thanks to you guys out there and stay safe till next time. Peace out, everybody. Have a good one, everyone. Bye, everybody. Ciao, everybody. That's it.